In this video, I will consider one numerical on node analysis. Determine the power supplied to the circuit by 50 volts. Also find the power dissipated by each register in the circuit using nodal analysis. This is the given circuit we are supposed to calculate power supplied by this 50 volt voltage source and also we should find the power dissipated by each of the register of this circuit. We should use nodal analysis. So as we know in node analysis, we are supposed to apply KCL to nodes. So this is node 1 and this is node 2 and here we have the reference node. The voltage of reference node is always 0. Now let me consider this is the same circuit. V1 is the voltage at node 1 that V2 is the voltage at node 2. So in node analysis, first step is mark all the branch currents. I will assume current through this branch is I1. Current through this branch is say I2. Current in this branch is say I3. This is I4 and let this be I5. So now apply KCL to each node. Let me apply KCL to node 1 that is apply Kirchhoff's current law to node 1. So as we know KCL says that incoming current is always equal to outgoing current. So at this node current I1 is incoming and I2 are leaving the node. So I can say I1 is equal to I2 plus I3. So let me express. So in nodal analysis, all current should be expressed in terms of node voltages. So here I1 is the current which is flowing from 50 towards V1. So I1 is the current. This can be expressed as the potential difference between 50 and V1 divided by register because we know that I is equal to V by R. So I1 can be expressed as 50 minus V1 divided by phi minus J2. Similarly, I2 is nothing but V1 minus as, as I said, this is the reference voltage node and its voltage is always 0. So V1 minus 0 divided by 3. So simply I can write V1 by 3 plus I can write I3 is nothing but V1 minus V2 divided by J5. V1 minus V2 divided by J5. So, so let me simplify this further. I can write it as 50 divided by phi minus J2 is equal to, I will take this V1 on other side. I can write it as V1 divided by phi minus J2 plus V1 by 3 plus V1 minus V2 divided by J5. So now let me simplify this further. I will write here. So I can write it as 50 divided by we have phi minus J2 is equal to I will take V1 as a common term 1 over phi minus J2 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over J5 and we have minus V2 1 over J5 1 over J5. So now simplifying this, just substitute these values in calculator, keeping calculator in complex mode. So we will get 8.62 plus J 3.45 is equal to, we have, so solving this, we will get 0 0.5057 minus J 0 0.131 V1 minus 1 over J5 is nothing but 1 over J means minus J that minus J and minus will become plus 1 over 5 is 0 0.2 V2. Let me call it as equation 1. So now similarly apply KCL to node V2 that is apply KCL to node 2. So here in node 2 current I3 is incoming I4 and I5 are leaving the node. 
so I can write it as I3 is equal to I4 plus I5. So here I3 is nothing but V1 minus V2 divided by J5. We have V1 minus V2 divided by J5 is equal to I4 is nothing but V2 divided by 5. That is V2 by 5 plus I5 is nothing but V2 divided by 2 minus J2. That is V2 divided by 2 minus J2. Let me simplify this. That is V1 by J5 minus V2 by so I'll take V2 on left hand side. I can write V2 by 5 and this will be minus V2 divided by 2 minus J2 is equal to 0. Now let me take V1 common. V1 we have 1 upon J5 minus I'll take V2 term as a common I can write here it is 1 over j5 plus 1 over 5 and for this it is 1 over 2 minus j2 it will be equal to 0 so I can simplify this further so 1 over j is minus j so I can write minus j 0 0.215 5 is 0 0.2 v1 minus so simplifying this using calculator keeping calculator in complex mode we will get 0 0.45 plus 0 0.05 j v2 is equal to 0 or i can write j 0 0.2 v1 plus 0 0.45 plus 0 0.05 j v2 is equal to 0 let me call it as equation 2 now let me solve equation 1 and 2 using Kramer's rule that is simplify equation 1 and 2 using Kramer's rule So as we know in Kramer's rule, we are supposed to write the equation in matrix form. So here in equation 1, consider the LHS part that is 8.62 J3.45, 8.62 plus J3.45 and here we have the value is 0, value is 0 keep it in one matrix is equal to now the coefficient of v1 the coefficient of v1 of first equation is 0 0.5057 j.131 write that here that is 0 0.5057 plus j 0 0.131 that is coefficient of v1 then write the coefficient of v2 of first equation that is j0.2 that supposed to be written as j0.2 this is coefficient of v2 similarly the coefficient of v1 of first equation second equation is j0.2 write it here j0.2 and coefficient of v2 of second equation that is 0 0.45 0 0.05 0 0.45 plus j 0 0.05 is written here then another column matrix that is v1 v2 so if we multiply this matri matrix with this we will get the same equations so to apply the Kramer's rule first we have to find the determinant of this matrix this square matrix that we will call it as delta that is equal to we have 0 0.5057 plus Z 0 0.5057 plus J 0 0.131 0 0.2 J 0 0.2 0 0.45 plus J 0 0.05 so solving this will get so in, in 
in determinant product of this into this this and this product minus this into this it gives 0 0.2742 minus j 0 0.0337 so after finding the data, we are supposed to calculate the unknown variables V1 and V2. Let me calculate V1 first. That is V1 is equal to. So now in this matrix, the V1 column should be replaced by this value. So here we have 8.62 plus J 3.45 and here it is 0. This column should be kept as it is. That is J 0.2. 0 0.45 plus j 0 0.05 divided by delta which is equal to so here this term into this term minus this into this so here this term will be 0 so this into this divided by delta it gives 12.447 plus j 8.5 765 volt let me keep this value in polar form that is 15.223 so always keep the voltage values in polar form we have 35.15 degree so this is the value of v1 now let me calculate v2 simplifying this we'll get 3.240 minus j 5.889 so let me keep the result in polar form so always voltages should be kept in polar form so polar form of this will get 6.721 at an angle of minus 61.18 degree now we'll calculate the power dissipated by each register so to calculate power dissipated in 3 ohm register that is nothing but we know that power is equal to V square by R. So here it is V1 square by 3 that is power dissipated by 3 ohm register. Power dissipated by 3 ohm register will be equal to V1 square divided by 3 that is nothing but so, so while calculating the power we are supposed to consider only magnitude the magnitude is 15.223 so here it is 15.223 square divided by 3 so solving this we will get 77.246 volts so now similarly we have another register 5 ohm power dissipated in 5 ohm will be v2 square divided by 5 so similarly i can write power dissipated by 5 ohm is equal to v2 square divided by 5 so here this is the magnitude consider only magnitude 6.721 square divided by 5 so we will get 9.03 watts sorry this is supposed to be watts so to calculate the power dissipated by 5 minus J2, let me calculate I1 first. So here we can see I1 will be equal to 50. Already we have written that I1 is nothing but 50 minus V1 divided by 5 minus J2. 50 minus V1 divided by 5 minus j2 so here substitute the value that is 50 minus v1 is nothing but 15.223 at an angle of 35.15 divided by we have 5 minus j2 so directly substitute these values in the calculator and simplifying we will get the result as 7.161 at an angle of 8.662 degree amps so therefore 
now we can write the power dissipated by 5 ohm will be equal to i1 square into 5 so this value square into 5 it gives 256.4 watts so similarly now we will calculate the power dissipated by 2 ohm rejector for that first let me calculate i5 i5 is nothing but v2 divided by 2 minus j2 that is i5 is equal to v2 divided by that is 2 minus j2 which is equal to we have v2 already we have calculated v2 that is 6.721 6.721 at an angle of minus 61.18 divided by we have 2 minus j2 so solving this we'll get the result as 2.376 at an angle of 120 degree 0.187 degree amps so therefore power dissipated by 2 ohm will be equal to I2 square into R that is 2 which is nothing but here the magnitude is 2.376 square into 2 so solving this we will get 11.291 watts so now it is asked in the question that we are supposed to calculate power supplied to the circuit. So power supplied to the circuit is always equal to total power dissipated in the circuit. So we can say power supplied is equal to total power dissipated. Total power dissipated so i can write power supplied is equal to now we supposed to add <coughs> all these powers that is this plus this and we have this plus this therefore i can write 77.247 we have plus 9.03 plus 256.4 plus we have 11.291 11.291 solving this we will get 354 watts so this is the final answer thank you for watching